to our multidisciplinary meeting um, in December, and it's about adrenal vein sampling. And I want to get go through a couple of cases uh, just to in, reinforce really a, a, an important message. So this is a young person who's hypertensive and hypokalemic. Okay, that's a key thing. Sodium 142, potassium 3, and blood pressure 160, 110. So no question there's hypertension there. And it's a young person. So because they're young, it's worth screening for secondary causes. Okay? And just to remind you all, there's the renin antigen system. And essentially, you um, make aldosterone as a concept of angiotensin 2. And the angiotensin 2 stimulates aldosterone production, which regulates your blood pressure. Now, if you have an adrenal tumour, then your problem is a primary tumour that's making aldosterone, which is high, and that in turn will increase your blood pressure and suppress the renin. So the key thing you want to see in someone with Conn syndrome is a high aldosterone with a suppressed renin. Okay, um, so that's what you'd find in Conn syndrome. And just bear in mind that as we get older, there is a higher and higher risk of bilateral adrenal hyperplasia as a cause of um, a con syndrome, okay? So idiopathic bilateral hyperplasia. So here's a question that I want you to ask you, which do you think is more common at this age? Um, if I can find, answer that. Okay, you've got two choices. An adrenal, aldosterone producing adenoma, this is on your phones again, or idiopathic bilateral hyperalcyonism. Yeah, which is more common? Okay, that's 50 votes. Keep voting. Okay, so in fact, 32 of you think it's an APA and only 26 have voted for what I think is the right answer, which is bilateral adrenal hyperplasia. And I think it's more and more common in older people. But in fact, it's so much more common that it depends how you screen, okay? So if you present with hypertension and hypokalemia as your primary problem, then you'll see this. So, so, so the white bars are the number of cases that were referred before 1995 to all these big centers. And you'll see when they started screening with the aldosterone renin ratio, there is a tenfold increase in referrals in all place places. Okay, so suddenly we see much more. So remember, all of the data that was obtained in terms of adrenal adenomas was obtained when the prevalence of, our, of cons was thought to be quite low because these are the adenomas. And now we're picking up a lot of um, different cases. Okay, and so the other thing they've found is that since they changed and since we're screening we're finding much less hypokalemia. So these are patients who've got essentially a milder form, and it turns out that these are the patients with bilateral adrenal hyperplasia. So the frequency of an adrenal adenoma used to be more than half, okay, 70%, but as soon as we started screening, now we're picking up lots of idiopathic bilateral disease. So what you are seeing now, because you are now working after 1995, we are seeing a lot of people who have got bilateral disease. Okay, you've got bilateral disease, you can't have an operation. Okay, so right from the start, we're picking up people who cannot have surgery as a treatment because they've got bilateral disease. So that is a key uh, message for the patients that we're seeing. Okay, increasing numbers of bilateral disease, bilateral adrenal hyperplasia. So it depends how your patient's referred. If you screen a hypertension clinic, you'll pick up a lot of bilateral disease. If the patients present with severe hypertension and a very low potassium as their primary problem, then they're more likely to have a true cons adenoma that can be treated. So bear in mind that this change in emphasis means that the, the thought that is really, really common, that tumors are very common, is incorrect. The tumors are pretty rare. And I've been digging around to find some papers. And basically it looks like now, 50 to 70% of patients have got bilateral disease. Okay, and within a hypertension clinic, so this is from one clinic, they had 6% of patients who had primary hyperalcinism, and of those, 65% had bilateral 
adrenal hyperplasia. Okay, so that's important because it means that our guidelines with regard to surgery will not be helpful for people who have got bladder disease. So there's an algorithm for what we should do. Patient with hypertension that increases for primary ulcerinism. So that's because they're hyperkalemic. So you need to decide if it's likely or unlikely. And we, for example, a younger person is a bit more likely to have primary hyperalcinism. So you then have some screening tests, then you have some confirmatory tests, um, such as an, a suppression test with saline. So the screening test is the ratio. There's a small false positive rate there. We use the confirmatory test to try and confirm it, but that has got a false negative rate. And so you've always got to bear in mind your your suspicion. So if they, for example, have a low, low potassium, that would make me more suspicious. Okay, and then you need to decide if the patient wants surgery. Now, I think this is in the wrong place because if the patient doesn't want surgery, you don't need to do a CT because the purpose of a CT is to see where the lesion is, okay? The diagnosis is a biochemical one. Still, the guidelines say do a CT and then say, do you want an operation or not? I'm not quite sure why that is. If the patient doesn't want an operation, then you don't need to do anything. You can just treat the patient, whatever the cause, unilateral or part of the disease. If they don't want surgery, the treatment is spironolactone or aplerinone. But if you do want surgery, then you need to decide if the patient has unilateral disease, which is the only thing that's treatable. If it's bilateral, then we're back to spironolactone. Okay, so that's a really, the, the key point about venous sampling is not to decide which side the tumour is on, okay? It's to decide if the patient has or has not got bilateral disease. That is the purpose of venous sampling. So this is the patient, and I've got some more results now. This is the patient who, hypertensive, a bit hyperkalemic, was three, remember, aldosterone 510 with a suppressed renin, okay? So the guidelines say if the ratio is more than 2,000, which it clearly is, then it's likely, and if it's less than 850, it's unlikely, and in the middle, there's a big range of 850, 1,750. Anyway, all tests have a risk of being false positive and negative, so we need to do further testing. So this is the further testing, okay? And essentially, if you give someone saline and the potassium is normal, if there's a tumor there, you should not be able to suppress the aldosterone. And if it goes below 140, that makes it very likely to not be common syndrome, not be a primary tumor, big aldosterone. If it doesn't fall below 280, then it's very likely to be a, a common syndrome, either unilateral or bilateral, and if it's betw in between, then we're not really any further forward, okay? So we just have to use your prior probability thoughts. So this patient looks like they have got primary hypoalcinosis, but we don't know if it's bilateral or unilateral. So as we always do, we're going to find out which side the tumor is on or if they haven't got one at all. So first of all, you'd say to the patient, it, you might have a source of aldosterone, a tumor, or it might be lateral. If we find a tumor, do you want to remove it or do you want to stay on tablets? And there are some patients who I'm absolutely not having an operation, then that's fine. Then we should treat them medically, just like we treat essential hypertension, but perhaps treat the aldosterone with, with spironolactone or epilaronone. Um, but we know the patient has got biochemical con syndrome and it could be unilateral or bilateral. Okay, so that's the choices. So I'm going to ask you what you'd like to do. If the patient says, um, I'd like to, um, if there is one, I have an operation, but let me just show you the, the comments here, okay? The patient did have a CT, and the CT shows a 1.7 centimeter left adrenal adenoma. So the patient's got Con syndrome biochemically and adenoma on the left-hand side, and the right adrenal is completely normal. So your options are, venous sampling, left adrenalectomy, or start spironolactone or plerinone. Okay, there's a visible left 1.7 centimeter adrenal adenoma. Okay, so 32, most of you want to venous sample. Um, 11 want to check out the left adrenal and two want to start spironolactone. Okay, so let's just take that a little bit further. 
So we did go on to venous sampling because we have it available. And really I want to know that the right normal adrenal isn't making any aldosterone. So you cannulate both adrenals. Um, the right adrenal hooking around here is a particularly difficult thing to do. Um, but sometimes they can't get over alive. And there, there's the, my visible lump, okay, that we talked about. Okay. Um, so we've done all these things. So here are the results, okay? And as you can see, the left adrenal ratio is very, very high out of the to cortisol ratio. So the cortisol, first of all, is higher than the IBC on the right and the left. So we know we're in. And then the ALDO on the left is 50,000, on the right is 2,000. And here are the ratios, 6.3, 1.1, and 2.3. Okay, I will show you the ratios again, but I just want to ask you. Okay, so on your, on your phone, you'll be having these three choices. So given these numbers, the left adrenal ratio is 6.34, the IBC is 2.3, and the right adrenal is 1.1. So your options are take up the left adrenal, take up the right adrenal, or start medical therapy. Okay, so 45 of you want to take up the left adrenal and 60 of you want to start medical therapy. And luckily, no one wants to take up the ni nice normal adrenal. There's a chat question here. Um, I can't see, hang on a second. I'll come back to that, I can't find the question, I'm afraid. Okay. Um, so yes, so that's what uh, would normally happen. The left adrenal clearly has a very high ratio. The right adrenal is suppressed, and this is the key. So if the right adrenal ratio is less than the IVC, then you can see the right adrenal suppressed. And we have also found sometimes that the, I mean, our guidelines say if you want to be really specific, then the right adrenal ratio needs to be, the other adrenal needs to be less than half. This is just under half, 2.3, it would be 1.15. So if it's under half, then you are pretty sure, uh, in fact, 100% in, in, in our series, that you have a suppressed adrenal. If it's between uh, half and one, so if it's like 2.3, um, I'll show you a case in a minute, then it's not quite so clear cut. But this is a very clear cut right adrenal suppression. So the, the real purpose of this venous sampling is to prove the right adrenal is suppressed, okay? That's what really matters, not the fact that the left adrenal got a high number. That doesn't matter at all. And I'll just see what you think, because what happens in real life, of course, is that sometimes we can't cannulate one of the vessels, okay? So in that patient, the patient had a left adrenalectomy, and there was a 70 millimeter nodule, and the patient was basically cured, to summarize a long story. And here's the question, did we need the angiogram? Maybe not, if the patient had that left adrenal taken out. Um, and so it needs a radiologist to say, this is likely to be the source, and that's also could be the right adrenal that's completely normal, not even a bit nodular. This patient would have done okay with, without venous sampling, okay? Now, supposing we can't get into the right adrenal, this is a common scenario, because getting around that corner needs a very special radiologist, okay? And sometimes it just, they just can't get in. So I want you to tell me what you think we'd do if you had this scenario, right? Where the left adrenal was nice and high, the IVC was 2.3, but the right adrenal cortisol was the same as the IVC. So we know we're not in, because the cortisol is the same in the IVC and in the right adrenal. And so the right adrenal ratio is also the same. So basically it's not the right, that's another IVC. So all you've got is a left adrenal sample, okay? So I want you to now vote if we don't count the right adrenal, which of those things would you do? Okay, we've got 35 votes. So options are left adrenalectomy, right adrenalectomy, start tablets, or repeat the angiogram. Okay. So this is tricky, isn't it? And the problem is that the left adrenal uh, looks 
like a nodule, looks like it's got a tumour, so that will be a reason in itself. And we're now going to have to ignore the venous sampling because I don't know if the right adrenal is making a similar amount, then the left adrenalectomy would be the wrong thing to do. But on the other hand, if it's suppressed, we can't tell. So you look at it as if you haven't got the venous sampling. And remember we said at the start, we didn't need it, but it's still a risk, okay? Because if you take out left adrenal and the right adrenal is making a little bit of albuterra, you're gonna have a non-cured patient. And so really what you want to do is repeat the angiogram. And if you, if you ask a radiologist, sometimes they say, there's no point, I know I can't get in. And so they'll refuse, okay? But that's what you need to think about doing. But let me give you um, another scenario, okay? So supposing we can't get in to the left adrenal, okay? So we failed to cannulate the left adrenal on this, on this example. There's a nodule and you can't cannulate that side. So let me just see what you think we'll do there. So let me just show you what the numbers are. So here we are. So we cannulate the right adrenal correctly. We do have the IBC, we can't get into the side where the tumor is. We have an aldosterone that's the same as the IBC and the same on the cortisol, that's the same as the IBC. So what are your choices here? Do you take out the left adrenal, the right adrenal, medical therapy, or repeat the angiogram? So I'll let you all think about waiting for that. So we've not got into the side of the tumour, but we have got into the other side. Okay, five seconds. Yeah, okay, so in this scenario, okay, repeating the angiogram is definitely not needed, okay, because we know that the right adrenal is suppressed. So you have proven that the contralateral adrenal is not making aldosterone. And therefore you can confidently say that the concentra must come to the left side. So in fact, surprisingly, the time when you actually don't need to repeat it is when you have not cannulated the side with the lesion. Obviously, we'd like to cannulate both sides, but this is just hypothetically. In the, and this happens in reality. If you don't cannulate one of the adrenals, it's the suppressed side that's more important to cannulate than the active side, because it's not to tell the surgeon which side it's on. The purpose is to say, is the other adrenal suppressed? That is my um, key message for this session. Okay. So the first cannulation, as I've said about 10 times, is, not, is to prove the condition is not bilateral, and if the ratio is less than 0.5 compared to the IBC, then uh, it is almost certain to be a single adenoma on, on the first side. Now I'll just show you another case that surprised us, uh, just to drive that point home before we finish. So this was another patient with really typical Con syndrome, okay? Hypertension and hyperkalemia, and it was consistent and persistent. And a CT scan showed a right-sided nine millimeter adrenal nodule and the left side looked normal. So the patient had a venous sampling, so there was a right-sided lesion, okay? And the lines, the lines were in, and you can see the cortisol levels compared to the IVC, which is a bit low, are higher, and therefore we think we're in. And remember the lesion, okay, is on the right side, okay? And here you see, annoyingly, the ratio, the LT on the left side was 6,000, compared to 400, so very high ratio on the left. The right adrenal was partly suppressed, but remember I said less than half of 3.2, which isn't quite there. Now some guidelines say if it's less than 3.2, this is unilateral disease. So according to some guidelines, this is quite clearly a left adrenal source. According to other guidelines, it's bilateral disease because this 3.0 is not sufficiently suppressed. So that was a bit of a quandary because the lesion on the scan was on the right hand side. So what happened in fact was I went through with the patient and she lost total confidence in us because she said, well, you don't know which side is on, you're clueless. And so she basically DNA'd for some years. And I put her on spironolactone um, through the GP and she was all right on that. Okay, so just to summarize what I've said, according to the guidelines, the endocrine side of the guidelines, 
it could be unilateral because they say the ratio should be less than one. Um, but according to our experience, we'd say that the ratio should be less than a half and therefore we're a bit, a bit, a little bit more worried and therefore because it's 0.94 and discordant, we managed for medical therapy and she didn't have surgery and then she DNA and then she had family illness. So she was on spinal lactone for some time. And then um, she came back to clinic saying, I don't like spinal lactone. Can I have that tumor removed? And I then realized we didn't know which side it was on. And so I thought, let's repeat the, the inner sampling two years later. So here we go, we do it again. And this time um, we're in his cortisol. So the IVC is 139. The left dream is 630, the right is 800, so we're definitely in. And the ratio, unfortunately, is higher on the right and on the left. And so this patient has clearly got bilateral adrenal hyperplasia. And therefore, surgery is definitely not going to help this patient because it will, if you take one adrenal out, they'll be exactly the same. And of course, we can't take both adrenals out because it will make her more likely to die of an adenosine crisis. So I think that was the clue. The fact it was nodular on the right-hand side of the start it should have worried us and it did worry us and luckily we didn't take out any adrenals. So she basically isn't cured and is on long-term medical spinal lactone treatment. She's not happy with, but it's the best that we have. So just to summarize really, um, we did reinvestigate her, but we clearly know she had got bilateral disease. And this case, this suggests really that we need to be a bit strict with the criteria for suppression of the other adrenal. And really go by your um, prior probability. So if the potassium is very low, that would make you think a bit harder and look a bit more carefully. But once you've got bilateral disease, then surgery is not an option. And I'll leave it there and say thank you very much all. And I think it's four o'clock, just about.